Okay, good morning, everyone. Let me know you can hear me. <coughs> uh, thin means it's too thin, koala bear. <coughs> I think we're just going to have to watch the, both of these here because this is looking better. And it's looking better and better and better. <coughs> We have, two, we have two good ones today. <clears throat> so let's look at the market. Market's higher. Nice recovery yesterday. Kind of a weak close here for the SPY, but it's gapped up this morning, so it's recovering nicely. I put the bullish watches in the room if you wanted to watch ADSK or the other one, AMAT. This is probably better here, the AMAT, if you want to go aggressively long. I'm just going to do my normal shorts today. So here's the target on FL. Um, Rumi, I've been talking about FL. I wrote the rating up in the morning, but it, it might be different now. It's, that was a while ago I rated it. Now the option letter is something separate, but I'm just letting people know that there was a, there was letters sent out this morning to check their inbox. <coughs> no, it's just whether I have my, my if I have my uh, keyboard on cap, then it's all caps. We just focus here on the day trading right now, today. That's what we got to do here this morning. So one quick short and out today. Market is bullish and it's Friday anyways. And this should drop right away. It's preferred. Actually, I want them both to do that. So I'll put Foot Locker up as the main one. The rating has changed, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Just follow me here today. Nothing is not spready. Everything today is spready. <coughs> this is it for the shorts. Good luck, everyone, and to me as well. Gorgeous day in New York, beautiful. <coughs> okay, don't jump the gun at anything today. So Campbell Soup isn't open yet. Foot Locker isn't really moving. Just wait. There it goes. So this is open, but no volume here in this. It's the Campbell Soup really too thin. Wow, oh, it's really too thin. All right.
Don't do anything until I say. So the volume's coming in now in the second bar of Campbell's Soup and Foot Locker we're watching too. Oh, this is going. I think this is the open here though at 931 on the on the CPB. I'm watching the Foot Locker here, but no one should be in anything. I haven't called anything yet. I haven't called anything yet. <clears throat> I think this bar was the open. Okay, Campbell Soup, let's watch this now. The volume's in it. Let's see if we can get a setup in this. I think this bar really was the open. Let's watch, let's watch this. Okay, nothing set up yet. No one should be in anything. This is rallying. Gosh, nothing's setting up. All right, stay with the Foot Locker. Be off Campbell's Soup. Let's do 75 by 50. Here, it's going right now. I didn't get it. Here, you can do this. I didn't even get it. I didn't even have time to bring it up. No, I'm not in it. If you want it, you can do it right here. Put the stop at 61.50. It's a dollar from here. It just broke right when I called it, and I didn't even have it up on my monitor. I'm not in it, but you can do it if you want. If it pulls, if it pulls up, then I'm going to take it, though. It just broke so quick. And I just couldn't decide what to do. <clears throat> I'm not going to chase it. But if you want to be in it, stops 50. All right, let's see if it pulls up. 6150 is a stop if you're in it. Let's see if I can get in it. No, it's just going to go. Maybe I was too cautious today. If you're in this, a stop is 6150. I don't know if it'll pull, get another entry or not. You can be in it if you want. Oh, this is off. All right, so this is the one to focus on here, but I didn't even get the chance to even give you the number. I just said take it. It was 94 by six, uh, 50 if you did it, but I didn't give you the 94 number. I just said take it. Either way, it's already going. Here, let's see if it backs up. Let's see if it backs up. This is a way bigger stop than I wanted to take. If you're in it already, it's valid. Stop is 61.50 though. Crap, it's going to go. Just do it. Do it right now. It's going to break. There, there, there. Just take it. Take it and get the stop in at 61.50. We're not going to get a good entry. Just be in it. This is the high of the day, though. 61.50. 61.50. Just be in it. It's going to break. It was it was a late call. Let's see if we can get it down to 59 and make it worth it. Just a big stop. I sized myself for a buck, but it just broke past that. Don't worry about it. Get the stop at 61.50 and be in it. It's not going to back up. Do either do it or we get nothing today. $59. Let's see if we can get a dollar out of it. It's better than nothing. Just couldn't decide which one to do. Here, FL. Here, here, here. We could scalp out of some of this because it was such a late, late entry. Here, 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 here. No, I think it gets to 59. Here, try to hold it if you took it with me. If you got it earlier, you could piece me a lot of somewhere in here. First target was 60. Here, maybe we can get it down to 59. Crap, that was just so fast. Here, all right. If you got this back up in here, which I did not, 
It literally broke and I couldn't decide which one to do. Here, here, here. You could get out of some of this here. You get out of the whole thing. I'm going to try to hold it down at 59. I almost didn't do it. Here, $59. Let's see if we can get Foot Locker. Here, $59. So we'll go over this when we're done. You should be in it, and if you didn't get it, then you got nothing today. Just a, a late entry for me. I was thinking it would bounce here. It didn't happen, but this was the entry, and I kept flipping, 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 and then it just broke. Here, Foot Locker. Here. All right, this is it. Oh, my gosh, I almost didn't do it. You can't be too picky here. Foot Locker. Sometimes when things are ready to go, they're ready to go. Here. Here, $59. Hand off the keyboard. See if we can get it down there. Here, let's just go over it. I'm really going to try to hold it down there. So anyways, this rallied up. And I kept flipping, flipping, flipping. I wasn't ready yet. Anyways, the perfect entry really was here. Okay. Uh, which I did not call. And then I said, take it here. And then I didn't get it. I didn't have time to flip around because I had the CPB up. Anyways, then I thought maybe we get a bounce. And then once I realized we wouldn't, I just grabbed it. Grabbed it, it broke, fell. Again, if you did it up anywhere in here, you could be out of the whole thing or at least half. I think this gets to 59. I don't think that's crazy. So... Here we go. See if we can get it under the low. And then this is it. This is our whole morning. 59 is the previous low. Good morning, Anna. You're late. If you didn't do this trade, it's way too late. I mean, if you just signed in. Here. Here. Foot locker. Koala bear got out. That's fine. Here. I think it's going to go 59. Here it goes. $59 Foot Locker. Came and do got out. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I can't take it. I did say yesterday, prediction, we'll get an easy one today that moves fast. That was correct. <laughs> Here, Foot Locker. Come on. 9.38. Wow, what a nice trade. Come on. How to be on your game this morning here, Foot Locker. Hesitation kills the cat. Here, Foot Locker. I swear to God, if I had hesitated one more millisecond, I wouldn't have done it. 21. Here, here, here. Here. Oh, yay. Come on. What a nice way to go into the weekend. Here, Foot Locker. Here. If it doesn't break 59, I'm out, but try to let it, it might. Here, it's going to. There. There, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. What a nice trade. Woo. And I almost didn't do it. Here, it still looks good. It can even go to 58. I was late on the entry, that's why. But it doesn't even matter. Here, it can even go lower. Is anyone in it? Crap, it is. It doesn't matter. What a nice trade. Wow. Be very careful here if you're still in it. I can't tell you to still be in it. <laughs> but it might go to 58. And look at the market. All right, let's just look at everything quickly. Oh my gosh, it's still going. Is anyone still in it? Holy guacamoles. Put a stop over 59 if you're still in it, but look. <laughs> I can get a 58. I did, I, I knew 59, 59. I need another cup of coffee. Excellent call, I'm the best? Yes. I think you might be right. <laughs> Can't disagree with you there. Here, foot locker. It's going to try to break 50. Is anyone on the planet still in this? Oh, my God. It went 50 cents under where I took it. Here. Is anyone still in it? 
Journey Woman, did you get it? Dubad's is still at it. He holds everything until it dies and goes to zero. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, let's look at Baba. Whoa, this really had a flip around today. Woo! Now this looks like buying. <laughs> this looks like buying here. Um, here it is. It's going to 58. Wow. I, wow. <gasps> oh my gosh. Here, be out of it. What a huge move. Even with a late entry here. 58.13. You got to be out of this here, people. Wow. Look at that. Mark said, yes, great trade. Not at zero. Dubods. Dubods, did you get out of the Baba yesterday or are you still in it? I've never seen something like that happen. You really had the gods of the trading gods with you there. Keyshore's out. Have a nice day. You're welcome. Prisco's out. Dubod's is still in it. This is literally under 13 if it can make it. If not, I mean, this is a big move here. Straight selling down. Oh, you're still in the Baba. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would get out of this. If you had this through today, right? It, it did it. I don't know how you got so lucky with this. No, the option letter is for option trades. These are day trades. So this is, there's no option trade in the, in the Foot Locker. Now the trades are different. The option trades are different than the, the day trades. Um, I wouldn't call this as an option here. I wouldn't, I mean, the best way to do stocks like this is to do, just to do the equity trade, to take the position and get out, to get in, get out, get in, get out. In fact, let's look at Chris's Cisco. If this breaks 31 today and you're up any kind of money and today's the expiration, I take it out. You did the put in this, you know, I'd be careful here. If you have Baba out till next week, 126, 127, you've got the market with you, which is good. Could get over the high. I don't know. Mark's going to have trouble here in the SPY. Q's look good. All right. Let's go over everything here. Um, this, really, I was right. In fact, I said it out loud. Too thin, this is the open, and it was the open. Actually, what was the one we did in the last month that did this? And then I went back and I said, wait a minute. This was the open. It, I, I thought it was, but it wasn't. Gosh, what one was that? There, I forget what it was. The second bar was the open. This did not open until 931. So this really never set up. Rallied up here and you can't short it. And the volume came in here. <clears throat> so I'm glad I got off of it. But I did like this too. Foot Locker ended up being better as the morning went on. So then I did have that up too, and I'm glad we didn't do this. Let's look at this. So Campbell's suit never set up, and the open was not on the open at 9.30. It was at 9.31, and I could tell by the volume. This is still fine. You're on a trial and made $850. Well, lucky you. Today's your lucky day there, Mark. Um, here is this, and who could believe this? So, of course, I was watching it, watching. I said, don't jump the gun, don't jump the gun. 
you know, but then by the time I flipped and moved onto this, it broke. I said, just take it. I told you where to put the stop. And then I thought maybe it would rally back. And then when I saw it wasn't going to, I grabbed it here in this bar. But the real entry was here, so you know. So I knew I took it a little bit late. So I really needed to get a move out of it, which, which, which we did. And I thought $59 was good. And I sized it for a buck, even though, you know, it was, well, I mean, the perfect, perfect, perfect entry would have been here which would have been 50 some cents. So I'm glad I, I, I took it, even though I didn't get the perfect entry. What are you gonna do? Anyways, it dropped, rolled, fell. I did not hold it to 58.13, but I'm glad I held it to 59 and it did keep going. I got it through the break of 59 though. So this was, this was a good one, people. This is a great exit. I, I Don't go back into this again. If you're out, your day is done. You had a good trade. Very nice way to go into the weekend. And did, did a good job yesterday with Cisco because it was the weakest thing to do and it really didn't fail. It actually made money. It just wasn't a lot or you got out break even. No one should have lost in that yesterday. Okay? And what a nice read on the gap here because I, I wasn't... I, I, I Campbell's soup could have worked. It didn't. But anyways, this got better as the morning went on. That's so rare, but it didn't report till this morning. So sometimes, this was not last night, this reported at 7.30, whatever, 7.15. So I rated it early. It didn't, it looked okay, not amazing. And then it started to get better. So I'm like, okay, fine. But either way, sometimes when you have a morning one, you have to go back and relook at it because it could get better, it could get worse. Rare that it gets better, but that is what happened on this today. Very important to be out of all shorts. Let's look at what the longs did. This fell. This worked. I didn't rate these bullish gaps. One worked, one did not. Big stop here. Oops. And this is flying. Um, AEO had a delayed open. Was this the one? Yeah, I think it was, because it happened I, It happened recently. Yes, I think it was. Here, let me look at it. I was, I was annoyed with that. When I'm back, I was like, darn it. I think it was. Here, 517. Very tricky. And the only way you can tell is the volume. There's no other way. You can't tell any other way but the volume. Yep, it was. And this was really tricky. It was, because it was so stinking late. I think it opened here at 9.35. That really stinks. Yep, that was the one. I knew there was one, and it was that one. Yep, have a good week weekend. You're gonna sign up for the options letter? Sure. Send me the information. Here, this is trying to roll over again. I don't, I don't think anyone should retake this. I don't know where this goes now. Here, let's just look where it could go. Definitely 58, which it didn't get to. Who knows? I mean, this, this stock can move. This bar over here, five bucks. Sure, this could get to 56 today, 55. But again, market's very bullish. You make your money in the morning, your job is complete. There's nothing else to do once you've done it. And we definitely, definitely did it. Thanks, Gator. Any questions from anyone about anything or anyone want to go over anything at all? Ask me now. We just went over the trade. What else do you want to go over? <clears throat> Weird week with the market falling and then flipping around and recovering. Not a lot of quality stuff this week, but got the ones that worked. Can't, can't complain about that. DKS worked, required a retake, and then ended up being a huge trade. And the holiday in a week, so who knows what the market does. Will we continue up here? And a 
holiday week? I don't know. I do not know. You're in a DKS revenge trade. I haven't looked at this for a couple of days. Let's take a look. It looks good for a revenge trade. You actually could have shorted this today as a day trade. And it looks lower. Yes. And again, anything that looks like this, when the market looks like this, is good. Here we go. Man, we could fly today. So we had we had a discussion. I, I'm upset I didn't tape the room. I thought I, I thought I pressed the button to tape it and I missed it. I didn't I didn't tape the discussion we had yesterday about low float stocks. I, I'll have to do some kind of lecture on that at some point or a webinar or something. Uh, <clears throat> because you know there's no is the guy that here that asked me who was the guy that asked me about that? The guy that asked me about the low float stocks yesterday. Whoever you are, are you here on the open house? Great trade, Melissa. After run, okay, came and dude, have a good weekend. Uh, there's the guy, JC. He's on the open of the house for the trial. Um, there's no methodology. I was thinking about this actually when I was talking to Rashawn this morning. Um, there's no method. There's no system. There's no strategy. There's no strategic methodology for you to find, pick, and play those or determine the ones that will work or won't in the gap. What was that poop one? GLYC, I think it was. This one here. That was the one you asked me about yesterday. There's no, there's no method here for you to be able to, to quantify this to determine what it will do. Very often, these are news-related news things that happen, news criteria, okay? There's no way to quantify this in a way that you could, you could systematically duplicate. Like, if, if, for example, let's just say you went long this and made money. How would you be able to do it again? Of all the stocks that look like this that have news, let's, I, I'm just, I don't know what the news was. I don't know if it's positive, negative, whatever. What I'm saying is, you, how could you duplicate the trade? If you did this, you made money going long yesterday. I never would have done it. But how can you how can you quantify that in a way that you can duplicate over and over and over and over and over again if there isn't a system or strategic method for you to follow to predict that it will happen in some other stock and some other symbol? Does that make sense? So just the idea of trading news pops doesn't work consistently on positive news or shorting things on negative news or whatever. The stock itself, the chart itself in this here, if you read this, first of all, it's not even open that long. I didn't even see that. I didn't realize it was only out till 2014. I'm just seeing that now. Well, after today's gap, the stock is actually in an uptrend. Yesterday, no. You could have rated this. It's actually the gap today. You could have rated today as a gap. I wouldn't have done it because it doesn't have enough history. But if you, if you, if this is actually an uptrend now, this stock. Today's gap, not yesterday's. But anyways, you have to have a way to quantify that it will happen. So very, and I'm talking about the one yesterday because that's when you brought it up. I would have never bought it. It wouldn't have rated good either. But you have to quantify the how to do this, to know to do it, to predict it, to go long it. You can't just say, well, I'm going to go long a low float stock when I have a news pop when it gaps up on news or gaps down on news or whatever, if there's no strategy behind what you're doing it or a way to figure it out to predict it, how are you going to have consistent results? That's, that's the other problem with these types of things, okay? They're, you can't predict them accurately. This is something you can predict accurately by using the 26 points. Whenever it gaps, whether it gaps up or whether it gaps down, you follow the system and you do it. So if you don't have a system to follow, just trading low float stocks 
isn't isn't a system. If that's what you like to do, fine. But what's the strategy? What's the system? How are you choosing the ones that will work? Also, how do you know which direction they will go? Do you understand what I'm saying? Have a great weekend. See you Monday. Okay, Susanna. I agree. It's not easy to be consistent trading penny stocks. A lot of people gain some, lose a lot. Well, it's very similar to the overall market in the sense that, you know, more people lose than win. But I'm saying it, this is very dangerous to people because people can lose a lot that, and they don't realize it. I think that's the point I was trying to make yesterday. They don't realize it. And this is, this is not a great example here because now it's at trading at $14, but very often ones that are worth $1, $2, penny stocks, very, very cheap, under $5. And even yesterday was kind of cheap, but I've traded stocks in this price range yesterday, but I, again, I wouldn't have done this. But is it, people think because it's cheap that they can't lose a lot, but then they're wanting to take a lot of size with a small account and you can really get hurt if something goes against you. It sounds great to say, well, I can take 10,000 shares of this and it's a dollar calling costs a dollar. Yeah, but if it runs up 50 cents against you, guess what? You're going to be on five grand. So again, you know, size is how you make more money, but you still have to have a quality strategy and, a, and you have to have an ability to be able to enter and exit the trades without getting hurt. And you can get hurt in these. And people don't think that they will or can because of the, because of the price points, which is dangerous. But again, it's the idea that you have to be able to duplicate the method that you do consistently and there has to be one. And if there isn't, how are you going to duplicate it? How? By following me taking my trades in the room every day for the rest of your life? I'm not going to be doing this for, for forever. So bottom line is that the best thing you could do for yourself is learn a strategy and a method that you can do yourself and learn. And you, you, you understand it. And it's something that makes sense. Um, you know, all of you know I've been working on this television show idea, but, you know, and, and, you know, Kramer has a show on TV on CNBC. He says stock picks that he likes. He likes this one higher. He likes that one lower. And he looks at fundamentals. You know, that's what he does. But he doesn't have a system or a strategy, for example, that you could duplicate or follow. You can take his picks when he gives the calls, but you don't know why he picks them. Now, he might explain it to you. He might say, I like Foot Locker, higher or lower, whatever he would say, and he would give you the reason, but would you be able to pick another stock, ABC, whatever, out of the chart and predict where that's going based on his method? No, because you don't know what his method is or how to, how to figure it out yourself. The difference with me is that you would learn the system and you can figure it out then yourself. And, and I, I think I said this in the room last week. I was joking about this, talking about it with my old broker. Because we were talking about it. She said, really, you're a, you're a chart analyst because you could look at anything and you don't need to know the name of it. You could say where it's going. And she's right. So I, don't, this, I could, don't even know what this is. It doesn't have to be anything. I could look at something and say, this is going here. That's it. And just give the numbers, reading the chart. It doesn't matter what it is or what the fundamentals say. I'm a chart reader. So if you can, these things, you, you know, if you don't have a method to trade them, a strategy to implement, you will not see consistent results. So, you know, it's, it's a huge benefit actually learning from me. Something that you can grab onto and hold and say, this is what I do and this is why I do it. You can actually, it, it's something tangible. You can talk to a person and say, I knew the Foot Locker was lower today and I shorted it and I made a dollar or whatever out of the stock today and it rated this many points and here was the target and it's lower still and here's where it's going and here's why, because of this, because it gapped down today and read it, rated this many points. <clears throat> Otherwise, you can't, no one can tell me here why this, you know, would work in a way you could duplicate it. But we could have 20 more foot lockers, you know, every day for the next month and do the same thing. And we'd know why it worked and we could predict it would work. Here, this looks like it's setting up again. <clears throat> Let's just see. It's a very important part, I think, that people miss about trading that want to trade. 
if you don't have a strategy to use to, that you can learn from someone to duplicate it, how are you going to survive? You won't. A, you won't make any money, and B, you will never be able to do it without that person, even if they're calling trades in a room. If you want to do this again, it's a kamikaze, but it could break again another dollar. 96 by 65, for, Foot Locker, for one more move. It's going to hit. It's a kamikaze trade, 50-50 chance of working or failing. I'm done for the day, but it, this didn't get back down to 58, and it very well could go another buck. If you really are desperate for another move, you could try. Time of the day is good here, 10 o'clock. So part of the strategy was a gap down. That is the strategy, Joe. That's the whole reason I did the trade. You must not know what I do. I trade gaps based on a rating system that I created, based on stocks having institutional buying or selling, which by the way, this was institutional selling in this today. And guess what? What did I say yesterday in this? This isn't getting bought. It didn't get bought. It did not. I said this isn't getting bought and someone said it was doing a, I forget what someone said. I, what, what did somebody say? They said it was doing a, <laughs> I don't remember. Somebody said it was doing a little thing here. I forget what the, somebody said. It was cute. Anyways, this did not get bought yesterday, see? We didn't get the sell-off to come in, follow through, but it didn't get bought. It wasn't getting bought with institutional money, even though it kept pushing back, it didn't. And even today, this looks like crap with the market. But unfortunately, this is a market stock, and so because the market gapped up today, this isn't getting the sell-off either yet today. It still looks lower, though, maybe for another day or two. Today, I don't know because of the market. But yes, I look at what institutions are doing, and that's what the gap rating method is based on. Let's look at the aim at. This might have opened and swished today. Let's look. No, not the other one. ABSK. Here. No, it didn't swoosh. It didn't swoosh, but this is institutional money that bought the stock today. Look, low of the day today is 106.87. Price of this right now today is almost 111. So that's getting bought. Boom. There. I didn't rate this. I prefer to short. I didn't go long. If you bought this today, you made money. You're up. It worked. So this is institutional buying in the gap. This gap up. So there's bullish gaps and bearish gaps. But that's what I do. That's the only thing that I do. But it, it is predictable. It is predictable. That's the other thing you don't have about low float stocks. You don't have, you don't really have the institutions buying those things. So any volatility that you have, um, is not volatility that I'd have a lot of conviction in. Let's put it that way. To hold. To, to stay. Here, let's look at Snap. Now, this is lower. This is unfortunate. This is another one of these IPOs that came out and failed immediately and is lower. So this is lower. Can hear it, everything. Can you take FL now if you want to, but it's a kamikaze. 50 50 chance of working or failing. 96 by 60, 96 by 65, I'd put it. 96 by 65 if you want it. If you want it, you can do it. But it's it may not work, I'm telling you, because the fact that it already had a big drop. And may push back a little bit more. But it, right now, it's very, very weak. It's 10 o'clock, and it didn't get down to 58, and I do think it's going to get there today. If you want to do it, here, 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 it's, here, it's going right now. I mean, you can't, you don't have any time to decide. You're either doing it or you're not. There, it just broke. That's exactly what it did in here when I was like, I fought for two seconds, and then, boop, here. <laughs> Look, so this probably goes to 58. Did you do it? Uh, did you do a Green Maverick? Look at JWN. That was from days and days and days ago last week. Nordstrom, the really new store in New York. I think it's going to open uh, Thanksgiving, fall, Thanksgiving weekend. Um, <laughs> I would not short this here. The data short this was last week. No short today in this. No. You're, this is like 95% of this move has already happened here. 
So no, you do not enter the short today. It was good a week ago, the previous day, not here. So could this follow through here lower? Yes. Do I think it does? No. I think it opened today, sold off here, gapped up with the market. Stock is lower right, you know, in the in the bigger picture here. But today, right now, to reshort this here intraday, I'd say I would not do that. I a foot locker is better to reshort again intraday if you want something. Or anything else that worked, but I don't think anything else did. I mean, basically, let's look. Cisco didn't follow through right today. What was the day before that we did? DKS, I said you could do. GPS fell. Let's look at that. This gapped up. Green Mavericks in it. And the Fort Locker again. Baba, I'll look at. Let's talk about that for five minutes and then that's all I have to talk about today. Uh, GPS was a bust. Can't go long. It can't short it. Actually, this morning it was higher, I think. Yeah, it was. No, it was last night. It was up at 25. I watched it. I saw it. Wasn't, wasn't good enough to go long. Can't short this here. It did gap up. Just failed. No, I wouldn't do anything with that. Um, no read on GPS today to trade. BABA is... This was the move. This was, First of all, let's talk about this. This was very unusual. It did end up getting bought. It ended up getting bought because the market held all day and it got bought here over the high. I did not like this in the morning to go long. I didn't like it in the morning to short after it moved up too, too aggressively over 8, 118, which I said in the morning then we got off of it, which I'm glad. I'm glad that we did. I don't remember the last time I saw something like this. I and mean, being aggressively bought the, after a gap down like this and the gap up the next day. If I thought that this was something great, I would have called an option in it. I don't, I did not like this. I don't know what this does here. This is acting strange. I think it's very strange that it flipped the way that it did yesterday. It did have the market with it, but I don't know. Gapped up today, and I didn't call an option in this, and I saw the gap up. I could have. I'm not I'm not crazy about this here. Uh, Javad's is in an option from the one I previously called out longer, and, and you made out here in this, because I had called the 120s, which just flew over the number. But, you know, if I had done it, I would have been out here. And then you were down in here. If you added the trade and flipped through, went through the strike, then very good. But obviously, I mean, I, there's something... This is, I don't know what to do with this here. This was weird the way it gapped down and failed and flipped and then gapped up. And I haven't seen it like this since I can't even say, but remember this is another one of these. It is not out that long. This is only out till the end of 2014. We don't even have three years of data history in this. It's hard to read something like that. This in here was very easy for me to read. And this was the huge trade that everybody did. And I called a good one in here, which people did too. Today, I don't, I can't say what this does here. Obviously, I can't, and I'm not, and I and I didn't, so I didn't call it. So no, I would not go along that. You have to do stuff that you can predict. Not everything is predictable. Not every gap up you can go long, and not everything that gaps down can you short. FYI, CPB, this rated good today, but then it never set up. Lane open, so then we didn't do it. But I watched it. It could have. It didn't. Is it still lower? Yes. Can you, go, sh can you go short this today, though? No. Would I go long this today, though? No, no. No. Most stocks on any given day, there's actually no, no play in them. Nothing to do. And I know people are desperate to do different things. They want to trade all the time. The day that the market did this move, I can't tell you how many people texted me or emailed me or called me Where's an option trade? Don't you have any trades? Is there, give me a trade. Hurry, hurry, hurry. I think people thought it would call everything to fall and call all these puts that night. Was it Wednesday night? Yeah. Yeah, it was Wednesday night. And, and Wednesday afternoon, because I said the market would have a big sell-off. But I didn't call a million shorts. In fact, I didn't call any, any at all then that day. And, and, and <laughs> I'm glad I didn't. They all would have failed. If you were looking for any kind of pullback, like an Amazon, because remember, let's pretend this didn't happen. If you were looking to do any kind of put to down here, or this was the day here, this was the close of the day. If you thought this was gonna come all the way in, I mean, people wanted me to call stuff. I said, no, I, this, I don't see it. And then it didn't do anything. And then they all would have lost. And I didn't call any of them. And I'm really glad that I didn't. So, you know, you can't just, think that every gap down is a short or going to follow through or vice versa for the ups.
And look at this spy here. But anyways, it goes back to the point that I was trying to make earlier. That's why you learn a strategy and a system and a method that you can use to predict it because you can't just go long every gap up and you can't short every gap down. You can't go long every news pop on a low float stock. You can't. If it was that easy to trade people, we would all, no one would ever lose. I mean, it's just like saying, well, I buy support in every moving average. When it hits the 200 pre moving average, I'm going to buy the support. Really? Well, if you did that in a foot locker, you're down a boatload today. You're probably bankrupt. Because if you bought support yesterday in the 200 pre moving average, the stock dropped and lost, you know, $15 overnight. So, you know, you can't just trade like that. It does not work. It just doesn't. It's not that easy. It's easy once you know what to do, but if you don't know what to do, it's hard. But I think people just think they know what to do and they don't know what to do. So they keep trading anyways. Some days they lose, some days they make money, but if they look at themselves overall, they're down. So then obviously something's not working. Trading is a skill and you have to have a system to apply each day to use consistently for profit. If you do not have one, then you don't have any skill at all. Reading the chart is something that takes skill. And it's, it's not about looking at the candlestick and a moving average. Reading the chart with skill means that you can predict the footlocker today is going to work as a short and go to 50, 59. And that's exactly what I did. If you can do that, you have a skill and you can duplicate it for the rest of your life. And you don't need me. Now, I'm good at calling the entries and people do like being in the room for that. The bottom line is, you know, you can, you can learn which directional way to take the stock if you rate it for my system and you don't need me to call the entries. You can do them yourself. People like being here for that, but you know if you know the footlocker is lower, you can play it any way you want. Swing trade, day trade, option, whatever. I think tr stocks like this are better traded for, for day trades. <clears throat> Same thing with Cisco. The ones that make it, the ones that, the ones that are fun to trade options are the ones you can make a crap load of money in really, really quick. And they also have a lot of time value. Stocks that are usually typically very, very expensive. This is one. This is one. This is one too. And this just because it can move really big, really fast. Although I called this very close to the strike. And Apple doesn't look so great. This doesn't look good here. And this doesn't look so great either. So. Let's look at the banks. What happened to JPM? VRX, I'll look at that. CPB, no, it's green. I'll look at it, but it's full on green. This is recovering too here, yeah. VRX. I don't know if you're long or short this, but I'll look. I don't know, I don't know why you want to play something like this. Where, I, you know, where is this going to go? Market's bullish today. This is what's the strategy here? Again, what's this? What do you hear? This is a great example. DJ, you said you're in this trade. Tell me why. Tell me the reason you're in this trade. What's the strategy that you're utilizing today to short the stock? I'm guessing you're shorted, and I don't want to know why because it's red. What's the strategy you're using to take the trade position that you're in today? You're in a position here. My guess is it's a short because you said the stop's 1351. But what's the strategy? Why did you take this trade today? Go. Write it in the room. Tell me. Because if you can't, then there's no strategy in play here. I can't even guess what this is, to be honest with you. I have no clue what your strategy is why you're shorting this here today. But maybe there's something you know that I don't. Why are you short the stock? You tell me that, and I'll look at this for Koala Bear. This never had a setup. This never had a setup. That's what I'm talking about. This did not open till here, rallying up. This is too big of a rally to short in here. So no, and it's green. And look at it. It's a beast. You can't short it. Your risk is 10 cents, but you're not giving me the strategy. What is the strategy in play here that you're trading in this stock? You're a shorter position. Why? Write it in the room. Because if you can't tell me why, then you don't have a strategy. Then you're just taking trades willy-nilly. That's dangerous. In a gap down failure, a day which ends in a green bar. Okay, let's go to Cisco. Or one which recovers from the previous day's close or low. What's your question, Journey Woman? 
Cisco ended up having a baby green with a tail. I wouldn't say this failed, it just didn't follow through. CPB failed. Here's a better example. This is a question. <laughs> is a gap down failure a day which ends in a green bar? Or oh, oh, it's a question. Okay. No, you can't even say that 100%. Why? Because sometimes we short a tail and then it flips. Gosh, I can't even think of one right now, but there's a million. <sighs> was it HTZ one? There was one that we did that we shorted, that we made money and then flipped and then bounced and then made a tail and then closed green and it wasn't a failure because we made money and we got out in the tail. So no, the answer is no. Here, we shorted this. Close with a tail and close green. Not a big green, but we did that trade. Um, there's, there's other ones with bigger tails. This here, you can't tell this. Pretend you didn't watch the, you can't see the one minute chart. We know what happened. This did not have to happen in the time that it did. This happened in one bar. At 9.30, the stock had this move. It opened at 31.10 and dropped down and made the low at 31.38 in the first 60 seconds of the day. You can't tell that from looking at the daily chart, but I know because I watched the stock trade. We There's a bazillion days in our lives that we short this, and it does not happen in 60 seconds. And it happens in five minutes or maybe 10 minutes or maybe 15 minutes, and we get this move. But not yesterday. That's not how it looked. But there's a million that do this, and they're not failures. So no. The answer is no to your question. And, you know, DJ, you still didn't tell me what your strategy is here. No answer from you. Uh, you thought CPB was still a gap trade. It was a, it was a watch. It was a gap. That rallied, retracted, small rallied, small, and then dropped. Okay, but you can't short it, so I don't know what you want to do here. I would describe this as a failure today to short, as a gap down. It rated good enough to short, never set up, failed. If it doesn't set up, to me it's failed. So, uh, you know, you can't short this and you can't go long it. To me, that's a failure. No directional bias to trade this on the day, that's a failure to me. What, what exactly is a gap failure? Something that rates well, that never sets up, that you can't short and you can't do. Or something that rates well, that does set up, that you get stopped in and fails. And it really fails. And you can't do it. That's a failure too. Does that make sense? A gap failure is when something rates well enough to do and it never sets up or it sets up and stops you out but it should have worked so what usually happens with those they usually follow through then the next day or later in the day I said we were gonna look at that yesterday and we didn't have time but we will sometime in the next month but that's what a failure is a failure is something that should have worked and didn't the day of the gap whether you took the trade or it set up or not it was a failure if it didn't work and it should have. No, you can't, you know, right, exactly. You'd have to go back and look at this here. Or you'd have to know how the stock traded. And this just lifted up here. Green Maverick, what are you doing in this? This one over 65. Anyways, DJ isn't answering me, but bottom line is you got to have a strategy to trade something. That's the point. You overbought the stochastic on the daily. You're just giving me indicators. It's not a strategy. That's like saying you bought it here in the eight period moving average, which is a black line, or you shorted it here in the eight period moving average on the black line. You're, you're just talking indicators. It's not a strategy. I just got done talking about that. You can't say I went long a stock because it held on the 200 pair moving average. That's not your strategy. It's not a strategy. It's an, it's an entry. You, you, you can, you're describing to me the entry, but you're still not describing to me the reason that you have 100% conviction this is going to fall today because you can't do whatever versus any kind of indicator every single day. 
consistently, again, this is the same thing we've been talking about. Otherwise, it'd be a heck of a lot easier to make money in the market. I'm going I'm to show you one thing here, and then I'm going to let everybody go. I got to go by 10.30. I have an appointment. Um, here, I'm just going to make this really... I'm gonna, I'm gonna sh show you something here. Look, there's nothing there. I have no indicators at all. I have, I have, I have the price, because I, if I get rid of that, we can't see what's happening. So I have the candlesticks there with the price. What are you gonna do? If you're trading based on, a, on in, some kind of indicator, you would freeze like a jackrabbit and never be able to trade again. But I could. I could look at this here. And I could tell you the foot locker is lower. But there's not there's nothing on it. I'd say this is lower today. And I could even tell you the targets. So when you get to that point, then you know how to read a chart. Green Maverick, then take it easy. Uh, you know, if you want to do this here in the 15 minute, you can. I don't know what time that sets up. If you want to stop for the day, fine. I'm sorry I didn't get the first trade in this. This is probably going to set up again. If it didn't hold in the five, probably the 15 minute. But the market is bullish and you got to be aware of that. I don't have anything else for you to do today. As far as this goes, you got to be on top of these ones here in the morning. And I was late in this today, but I didn't hesitate. You can watch it for the 15 minute if you really, really want to. I do think this gets down to 58 if it sets up in the 15 minute. The five minute didn't hold and I said it was a kamikaze. I know you didn't get the first one, I'm sorry. And, and, and I hesitated because I didn't get a great entry in this, but at least I got it. Sometimes you just go with it. You're watching the trading action, you rate the gap, you get the confirmation, you just do it. CCI divergence and 15 minute chart use a lot of indicators, yeah. So that's the, that's not a good way to trade, in my opinion, you rely on a lot of indicators. But if you do it, that's fine. Either way, you still have to have a strategy. You're still just describing to me indicators. If you have 27,000 indicators, it doesn't matter. You have to have a strategy, a reason for taking the trade. It's not because five lines intersect at a certain point. That still isn't a strategy. You gotta learn the difference between reading indicators and, and a strategy. If you want to, if you really want to make money. By the way, nice move off CPB and, and, and FL. Okay. Yes, I teach how to. The twenty six points is not based on indicators. I teach the twenty six points, which is how you read a chart. Now I lost this here. I got to get back to it. Hold on. Well, here I'll just make this the daily, and then I got to I got to go, people. Um, listen, if you're interested in the class, though, email me. Um, the 26 points are not based on indicators. You will learn how to reprice action. In the gap, that's all we're doing here is the gap. Like here was a bullish gap. You could have gone long here this day. Here was another bullish gap. You could have gone long here this day. This is Foot Locker, where I'm going back last year, 2016. Here was a bullish gap. You could have gone long this day. Here was a bullish gap. You could have gone long this day. Here was a bearish gap a couple days ago. Could have gone short there. Here was another bearish gap. This was a good one too. Could have shorted that too. Here was a bearish gap here today. Could have shorted it. We did. Now, I don't know the reason for all these gaps. Actually, three days ago, this gap down because of the market, like everything else. This one here was a big sell-off. I don't know the reason for that day. Some of these in here, I'm sure, this is probably earnings last year in August. Some of these in here are some earnings gaps, I'm sure. Today was earnings. Three days ago was the market. So you can look at all of those long ones and you can look at all the short ones, but not all are good. I could point out a million in here. I'm just pointing out the ones that I, I, I see are good. So yes, I do teach how to read charts in the gap class. And my charts are very clean. I don't have a lot of indicators. But the point I was trying to make to DJ is he's in a trade and, and he can't tell me why without talking about indicators. And I don't think it's a good short. Bearish candlestick signal on a five-minute chart. Again, 
that's a setup. That's an entry. That's not uh, candlesticks are indicators. You're talking about a candlestick. That's another indicator. Time is an indicator. Volume is an indicator. Candlesticks are indicators. You got to tell me something that's a strategy. You've yet to do it. That's not a strategy. I'm just trying to help you. Anyways, have a great weekend, everyone. Email me if you're interested in the class. I will uh, talk to all of you later and uh, enjoy your day. Good job today in Foot Locker, everyone. You're welcome. Volume is another indicator, DJ. You keep giving me indicators. Tell me the strategy. You're welcome. Great info, thanks.